I'm so excited about this week. I don't even have to try and hide it. It is Red River Shootout week. The Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas, Texas versus Oklahoma, Oklahoma versus Texas, whatever order you want to go in, I will follow you because I get to be there just like we were two years ago. It's really when I first took the iJosh out on the road and started showing you the vantage point that we get. We get to be on the sidelines for these games. And uh, this is, it's, it's perfect pretty much, especially if weather cooperates. It's a perfect scene there at the State Fair. The fact that I will get to watch a half of football and then eat funnel cake and then watch the second half of football, frankly, is a little bit too much for me to go into in great detail because I get a little bit too worked up about it. But man, what a game we have setting up. First, first time both of these teams are undefeated in this game since 2011, once upon a Saturday tour in town. Uh, I was doing some chatting, and by me, I mean I sent producer Jesse to do some chatting with Colin Kennedy and Tom Green and the guys over at Sooner Illustrated. Because I've seen Texas in person already this year. I have not seen Oklahoma in person. And here's what I hear a lot. Maybe you're contributing to this. Tell me, tell me if you've heard this before. Yeah, Oklahoma's 4-0, but they haven't played anybody. Our buddy Brandon Walker. Well, our acquaintance Brandon Walker is busy polluting the college football airwaves with not such nonsense, because it may be true, but just such statements lately. Now, I have always been of the opinion that it wouldn't matter. Like, you could lower the Kansas City Chiefs into college football as currently constructed, and if they played four tomato cans, people would say, well, they're no good, they haven't played anyone. Like, the Chiefs are the Chiefs. Or maybe the number one team in the country is Oklahoma, for all we know. They, they play who they play. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily... It doesn't necessarily negate how good you are if you haven't played anyone. Now, it also doesn't prove anything. So they may be a fraud. They may be a total contender. But eventually, if you play in that conference, if you play in a Power 5 conference, tests will come. Oklahoma has played one top 50 team in the S&P Plus so far this year. And they don't play another one inside the top 30 after this. We told you they had a workable schedule in the preseason. This shouldn't be a surprise to you but they got Texas to deal with this Saturday. What's going to happen in plus territory in this game, I think will ultimately decide the game. Yeah, starting field position is wonderful, and if you could give me a padlock stat that someone's going to average starting on their own 43-yard line, I would lean that way. But in absence of that kind of padlock stat, you tell me what happens once teams get across the 50-yard line. Oklahoma has forced a bunch of field goals this year, so they've been pretty good at this defensively. Texas at times, has struggled offensively when they've gotten past the 50. Now, as you know, and it's going to be a theme on tonight's show, just because you have a season's worth of stats baked into a particular cake, it doesn't always mean the slice you get that Saturday equals what the rest of the cake would lead you to believe it equals. So, in other words, you could be plus five turnovers on the season and be minus three one Saturday afternoon. Or you could be really subpar in plus territory, scoring touchdowns. But on any given Saturday, you get in there four times and score four touchdowns, and boom, you just beat Oklahoma by double digits. Like, that could be the long and short of it. What's real versus what's a mirage, though? That's what I want to know. Because everyone's out there telling me Texas hitting back. Well, all of a sudden, they beat Bama, and now people are convinced Texas is back, and then all of a sudden, they're, like, tied with Wyoming in the fourth quarter, and, oh, maybe Bama was a fraud. Maybe Texas is not back. Can we please not fluctuate? on our opinion of good old Texas week by week. And then with Oklahoma. With Oklahoma, I'm being told around every street corner, yeah, they're 4-0. You know, lady bagged my groceries today and said, thank you, come again. By the way, Oklahoma's a fraud that hadn't played anyone. <sighs> Are they, though? Or is it a real or is it a mirage? I don't know, guys. I don't know. Couples retreat. Um. C.J. Vogel over at Action had a really good stat. Texas's defense has faced four inside the top 70 in scoring. They faced four teams inside the top 70 in scoring so far this year. Oklahoma has faced zero. What does it mean? What does it all mean? I know what it's supposed to lead me to believe, but what does it all really mean? The beauty of this game, aside from the rivalry aspect, aside from the fact that you can smell the state fair outside, aside from the high-level competition, the fact that in many years it's an absolute shootout, last year notwithstanding, is we finally get to learn some stuff. We finally get to learn things that, frankly, Arkansas State, Oklahoma could not teach us. But Texas, Oklahoma is going to teach us a lot. 
This Saturday is Dylan Gabriel's moment. Make no mistake about it. You can talk to me about Texas' defensive front, Quinn Ewers. You can talk to me about Cook. You can talk to me about all those guys. I think Dylan Gabriel is actually the most important player in the game. He missed it last year when they got body bagged at the Cotton Bowl. He wasn't the starting quarterback. He was injured. He does not have a lot of big games started at Oklahoma, and that's how I define games. Brent Venables will tell you every game's a big game as long as we're playing four quarters. Yeah, if you're the head coach at Oklahoma, you better feel that way. I don't coach at Oklahoma. Probably never will. I don't want to rule it out totally. Probably never will. So I'm sitting here telling you I have not seen him in big games in the Crimson and Cream. Well, I do get to see that this Saturday. 75% completion percentage this year. But he hasn't faced anyone. I know, guys. 15 TDs, two interceptions. But he hasn't faced anyone. I know, guys. I hear it. You don't have to type it in the comment section. He's got four rushing touchdowns, too. He hasn't faced anyone. <clears throat> I'm doing this sarcastically because that is what the comment section will devolve into later this week. You know, they've asked him to run a fair amount. And in all seriousness, it's because they don't have a solid running back one right now. They've been sort of running back by committee. They're averaging about four yards per carry. It's not good enough. Over the course of a season, if you want to compete for a national championship, that won't be good enough. Their offensive line struggled at times against Cincy, struggled at times against SMU. This is by far the best front they will face all year and will have faced to this point. And Texas is going to be able to get after them. So what's the answer? I don't think the answer is Dylan Gabriel running around a whole lot. I don't think the answer is Oklahoma's running game is all of a sudden going to find itself against Texas of all teams. So if they're going to win the game, it's going to be Dylan Gabriel throwing the football. And that's why he's the most important player in this game. Quinn Ewers does not have to light it up Saturday. He needs to play very good. He does not have to have a career day. Dylan Gabriel has to have a career day for Oklahoma to win this game. I'm paying attention to some Texas injuries. Jatavian Sanders, that big tight end, uh, leads all tight ends in receiving yards nationally right now. Questionable, we'll see. Also, uh, Ryan Watts, you see the two guys on the screen here. He's a DB. He's really important because he's got size, and he matches up with Nick Anderson really well. Nick Anderson is a 28 yards per catch guy right now. He's big. He's a red zone mismatch. It greatly helps me if I'm Texas if I've got Ryan Watts playing. Okay, Colin, let's see what the model thinks. Let's talk about what Vegas thinks. The current line is Texas minus six and a half. Pretty close to what our in-house thinking is. We go over seven, so we got Texas minus seven and a half. The more I look at it, the more I feel the game out, the more I think Texas it feels like they're a year ahead of where Oklahoma is. And so there's a path, and I could paint you one for Oklahoma, but I wouldn't lean it. I lean Texas to win the game, and at six and a half, I lean Texas to cover in the game. And remember... Two years ago, I'm at this thing, and Texas gets this huge lead, and then they wilt in the second half, and they did that a number of times. That is not Texas now. It's no, it's no guarantee they're going to dominate late in the game, but they are a totally different program, not just team, but program, than they used to be in the second half. So if I get Texas with a lead late third quarter, early fourth quarter, I feel really good about my odds. Speaking of odds, these are the two odds on favorites to win the Big 12 championship. Texas number one, OU number two. Um, I'd be interested if OU did win this game to see how those odds flipped or whether they did flip. I imagine they would. But remember, we're just taking the top two teams in this conference to play for the title. So the odds right now would strongly indicate maybe we'll see this game again. How beautiful is it? that right now in conference play, we've got four undefeateds and Neil Brown in West Virginia is one of them. Mm. Also, how beautiful is this t-shirt Colin's about to show you? The Once Upon a Saturday Tour headed to Dallas. When I announced this Saturday or Sunday night, the shirt started to fly out off the shelves to the point where Monday morning Warehouse texted me and said, uh, we just smashed a 24-hour record. And that does not surprise me because Texas and OU are big viewer bases of ours. This shirt's available for one week. If you're listening on podcast, just picture one of the greatest shirts you've ever seen in your life and one of the greatest shirts you've ever worn in your life. I kid you not, and this is happening every week now, I'm walking along the sideline at Jordan-Hare Stadium, and about four or five times Saturday, you guys called my name, I look over, bam, once upon a Saturday shirt. It is the item of the fall. I don't think I'm stretching it when I'm saying that. It is the item of the fall. But unlike other items where they just throw it at you and throw it at you and throw it at you, nope, 
I'm going to tell you right now, this is the last time I'm mentioning it on the show tonight, and it's available one week and one week only to commemorate our trip to the Cotton Bowl, the real one, not the bougie one they have over at Jerry World at the end of the year. This is the real deal Cotton Bowl, and come Saturday, my social accounts will just turn into Cotton Bowl propaganda accounts because I am that in love with the building. So we're looking forward to being out there Saturday. Cannot wait. 11 a.m. local time kickoff. Texas to win, Texas to cover is my pick. 